Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is lecture number three, and we are dealing with the uh, center of mass. In the previous uh, <clears throat> class, we had seen some question on how to find out the center of mass of various types of uh, systems. We had a system where we had uh, four bodies placed at different, different locations. We had system where we had two bodies, a two body system. We had seen how we solve <clears throat> questions, whether it's a question of a two body system or a four body or a five body. Uh, we know how to find out the location of the center of mass. Yes or no? Do you understand this? Everyone? Remember this, everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, these uh, particles are not uh, the only uh, types of bodies. As we go ahead, we will be dealing with bodies which have a continuous mass system. I hope you understand the meaning of a continuous mass system. What is a continuous mass system? They are not particles. They are not discrete particles. One, two, three. They are not like that. They are continuous mass. What do you mean by continuous mass? Like this rod. It has a continuous mass. It does not have particles. It has a particle, but they are a large number of particles and they are very close to each other. So, so close that they form a continuous mass. Now, if you have a continuous mass, then how are you going to find out the center of mass of such a body? Now, if this is a continuous mass, you will have to break it up into smaller bodies and then consider them as uh, point masses or line masses and then you will have to find out the... <clears throat> integral uh, you have to find out the center of mass of continuous body so we write the heading center of mass of a continuous body center of mass of a continuous continuous distribution the mass is distributed continuously now, how do you find the center of mass of such a body? You will have to break that body into smaller bodies. And then you will have to find out the center of mass of that smaller body. And instead of using the sign of addition, we'll be using the sign of integration. <clears throat> X dm, the integral <clears throat> divided by integral of dm. <clears throat> do, we, <clears throat> do we understand what is the meaning of this? dm means a small mass you have to break the bodies into smaller masses find out their center of mass find out their x coordinate center of mass integrate it and then divide it by the total mass similarly if you have to find out the y position of center of mass how will you find the y position of center of mass you will divide the bodies into smaller bodies Find the y coordinate of the center of mass, multiply it by the small masses, and integrate the entire thing. Do we understand this? <clears throat> the z position of the center of mass. Very hardly you will <clears throat> come across any question where you have to find the z coordinate. Normally, most of the bodies will be two dimensional bodies. If it's a three dimensional body, it, it would be at the center of the body unless and until they make a question like this. Anyway, if you had to find out, it will be integral of z dm divided by integral of dm. In fact, if I have to write the position vector of the center of mass, I can write it as integral of <coughs> r into dm divided by integral of dm. This integral of dm actually uh, means the total mass of the body. Do we understand this? Now, we are not going to get into this process of finding out the center of mass. Hardly we will find questions where we will have to actually find out. We will go through and we will understand where the center of mass would be. Now, you can imagine if a body is uh, symmetric, mass is distributed continuously and the mass distribution 
the density of the body is constant. For example, you have a rod. This is not a uniform rod, but if you have a rod which is of the same length, same height, same thickness everywhere, and the mass is distributed equally, where will the center of mass of this rod lie? Do not take it as uh, thicker or thinner. Just assume it to be straight everywhere. Mass is distributed uniformly. Where will the center of mass of this rod lie then? Where will it lie? Where will the center of mass of a uniform rod lie? Difficult question? Middle, sir. We don't call it the middle. We call it the center. That's center. center of mass will lie at the center. Similarly, if you have a cylinder like this, where will the center of mass of the cylinder lie? Uniform, everything is constant, everything is same. Where will the center of mass lie? Center, sir. So, if you, if you have a body which is uniform and everything is uh, uniformly distributed, mass is uniformly distributed, the center of mass of this body should lie at the center. I'm just showing you a table where this all thing is given. And uh, you will have to remember this table. Most of the things you will know in this table. One or two things you might not know. So you can just remember them. And then we will uh, also see their values. The first uh, thing that you see in this table. First listen to me. Then you will write. Do you understand what is a hollow sphere? Football is a hollow sphere. <clears throat> hollow sphere. Center of the sphere, if you have a uniform body, it's always at the center. Whether it's a solid sphere also, it is center of the sphere. Circular ring that you wear, the girls wear rings. Circular ring, center of the ring. Now, this is the body where the center of mass does not lie in the body. It lies outside the body. Center of mass can lie inside or outside, depending on how the mass is distributed. A circular disc, CD, circular disc. Center of the disc. Uniform rod, center of the rod. We all understand this, right? Cylinder, middle point of the axis. Solid cylinder, middle point of the axis. So everything is uniform. The center lies, the center of mass lies at the center. Now, if it is of a different shape, square, rectangle, or parallelogram, uh, the center of mass lies at the intersection of diagonals. Remember, center of mass for a uniform body is just like a geometrical construction. So you intersect all the diagonals and the center of mass will lie at the intersection of diagonals. If you have a triangle, it will lie at the intersection of the medians of the triangle. Cubical block, cubical block, this one. You draw the diagonals and it will lie at the intersection of the diagonals. Do we understand this? The only thing is cone or pyramid, and I'll we will show we will see the diagram as well. It lies at a distance of three h by four from the vertex. So the cone is like this. From this point vertex, it lies at a distance of three h by four. I'll show you the diagram. First, note down these things so that uh, we can start. I'll give you two minutes to note down this thing, this table. Okay. The time starts now. Okay, then we are done with this. Now what we'll do is uh, we will write uh, the answers for some of the common figures by drawing the figure. And uh, I hope that uh, you are able to understand. Remember, uh, you will have to remember all these, uh, all these, uh, what should I say? All these center of masses, you will have to remember where they are. You cannot forget them. If you forget them, then uh, the thing is over. Okay, so the first one in the line is this one. This is the center of mass of a two-body system. Do we remember this two-body system? Yes or no? Center of mass of a two-body system, it will lie closer to the heavier body from the lighter body. 
Well, from the body M1, it is M2 L upon M1 plus M2. From the other body, it is M1 L upon M1 plus M2. Do we understand this? Yes or no? First, listen to me. Then I'll give you time. Then you can uh, draw the diagram and write it. Okay, don't be in a hurry to write it. First, try to understand it because you will have to remember them. If you understand them, you will be able to remember them. This is the second body. This is... This is a rectangular or a, it could be a square body as well. Rectangular body or a square body. The center of mass lies at the center. So this will be equal to B by 2. The value of X will be B by 2 and the value of Y will be L by 2. We all understand this? Okay, this is the center of mass of a rectangular body. Now, if, now you have a triangular body. Center of mass of a triangular body. So it comes here. Let me try to put as many as possible. Center of mass of a triangular body. Do you see this triangular body? Now center of mass of this triangular body. This is the center of mass. From the base, it lies at a height h by 3. h by 3. You understand this is the axis of symmetry you know so it will lie on this axis because it is symmetrical about this point only the y coordinate we need to understand and the y coordinate will be h by 3 we understand this yes or no are we able to understand the figure yes sir okay similarly now you have this body this is a semicircular ring if you have a full ring, the center of mass will lie at the center of the ring. But if you have a semicircular ring like this, the center of mass will lie not at the center because the other half is missing. So here also, you have an axis of symmetry and this is the Y coordinate. The Y position is, I hope you understand what I am uh, doing here. Yes or no? don't understand please let me know the position of the y coordinate of the center of mass is 2r by pi you already know the axis of symmetry is like this so the x coordinate is 0 do we understand this okay now similar to this you will have first listen to me then i will give you enough time to write don't be in a haste of writing in the haste of writing you fail to understand what has been what has been done the next one is semicircular disc this is semicircular disc so what is the uh, difference between a disc and a ring a ring is hollow a disc is full of material do we understand this here also here also we don't need to find out the x coordinate because the x coordinate uh, is zero you just need to find out the y coordinate the y coordinate is 4 r by 3 pi where uh, R is the radius of this circular ring. So, sorry, circular disk. I hope everyone is able to understand this. I will just write it here. This is disk. Half disk. This is half ring. This is triangular plate or a triangle. Triangular plate or a triangle. Trying to put as many as possible here. Let me see if you can put the entire one. The next one is this. What is this? What is this? Number six. What is this? Huh? Hemisphere. Not hemisphere. It is hemispherical shell. Do you understand the meaning of hemispherical shell? Do you understand the meaning of hemispherical shell? Hollow hemisphere. Do we understand? Hollow. This is a hollow hemisphere. Hemispherical shell. Again, we don't need to find out the X coordinate. The Y coordinate is R by 2. Oops, I am writing R by C. 
R by 2. You will have to remember all these results. I hope I am very clear. So first you listen to me. Then I will give you time. In listening to me, you also try to remember them. And then you try to draw the diagram and write on your own. If you can do this, that means you have remembered what I have told you. This is the next one. Number seven. What is this number seven? Number seven. What is this? Solid hemisphere. Uh, you, you do not have to call it solid because hemisphere is always solid. Sphere is always solid. Whenever I use the word sphere, it has to be solid sphere. Sphere is not liquid. Sphere is always solid. Again, you don't have to find out the x coordinate. The y coordinate uh, lies at a distance 3r by 8 from the base. I hope everyone is able to understand what I'm writing here. Yes or no? No, yes. Eh? What is going above our head saying bye bye? Bye bye, sir. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Huh? Bye bye. Okay. Two more are remaining. I will try to put them here. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, let me put them together. Okay, I think everything is there. Uh, these are two. These are two cones, if I may uh, say. This is a hollow cone. Both are looking similar. The diagram is similar. And this is a solid cone. Hollow cone, solid cone. And remember, there is always a confusion here. Hollow cone is H by 3. And the hollow cone, the formula is same as this triangular plate. Hollow cone is H by 3. Okay. But for a solid cone, it is H by 4. That is what you have to remember. Do we understand this? I mean, have you understood all these diagrams? Yes or no? Sir. Now I will give you five minutes. Draw them and if you could remember them. I will ask you to draw them on your own and if you remember them, draw them on your own as well. That would be a good exercise. Remember all these are questions that are going to come in exam. So I'll give you time now to draw them and remember them. Let me know once you are done, beta. Okay, then uh, let's move ahead. We have seen the center of mass of some common bodies. Uh, again, just to remind you that if a body is uniform, for example, a uniform plate, square, rectangle, or a disk, the center of mass will lie at the center. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Okay. Now, <clears throat> also, let us now try to... Uh, all these are questions, but I am giving you as a, a point that you have to remember. If you have an arc of a circle, <clears throat> if you have an arc of a circle like this, where does the center of this arc of the circle lie? If you have an arc of a circle like this, where does the center of this arc of the circle lie? Now, <clears throat> this, this arc of the circle could be in um, any quadrant anywhere. Now, remember, what you have to remember here is this is your x-axis. And this is your y-axis. You understand this? Now, the circle is, the arc of the circle is put like this. You can understand the y-coordinate of the center of mass would be 0. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do we understand this? 
Okay. Sure. Y coordinate would be zero. You only have to find out the X coordinate. This is the center of mass here and the X coordinate. If I call this as X, now remember for this body, the X coordinate is R sine theta by theta. The total angle is two theta. The total angle is two theta. Remember this theta has to be in radians and not degrees. Do we understand this? So this is how you can find out again. First, listen to me, then you write it. First, listen to me. You understand this? R sine theta by theta? Okay, now, if you have the same diagram, but in this way. Now see, this is again the same arc of the circle, but now it is put like this. Now, also remember, even in this case, the center of mass will lie on this axis, which is the axis of symmetry. Do we understand this? Yes or no? The central line. Do we understand this central line? because it is symmetrical. So no matter how I keep this circular arc, if this is a circular arc, the center of mass will always lie on the axis which is passing through the center. Do we understand this? Yes or no? In this case, the center of mass lies somewhere here. This is the X coordinate of the center of mass. This is the Y coordinate. And remember, this x and y coordinates are same as 2r by pi. Does this 2r by pi ring any bell? This 2r by pi was the center of mass of that uh, full semicircular ring. Do we understand this? Yes or no? So you'll have to remember all these things. Can you remember these? Okay, comes the next one. Again, I will give you time to note it. Don't worry. Right now, just listen to what I am saying. Now you have this one. And this is the same thing, but uh, this is disc. This is, this is a disc. Again, you have your uh, x-axis. And the y-axis, and you can understand that uh, it is symmetrical, so y-axis would be zero, and the center of mass would lie somewhere here. Do we understand this, or this has gone above our head saying bye bye? We understand this. The x coordinate of the center of mass, you have to remember this 2r sine theta by 3 theta. 2r by 3 comes. Remember, this theta has to be in which unit? This theta has to be in radians. Do we understand this? Okay. One more. This one. Now, considering that you remember what we have already done, can you tell me what will be the x and y coordinate of the center of mass of this? Looking at what we have already done and looking at what is there on the board right now, can you tell me what will be the x and the y coordinate of this one? This is what I say, understanding. Understanding things, understanding things and putting them to good use. This is what I call understanding them and putting them to good use. Yes. What will be the X and Y coordinate of the center of mass? X is equal to R by 3 pi, sir. Take a deep breath and then give the answer again. Deep breath is important. Deep breathing. 
Yes, try again. Four R by three pi will be X and four R by three pi would be Y. These are the answers for this one. I hope you can understand how this has come. Do we understand how this has come? Huh? Last but not the least, this one and I will put it here because I think there is space here. So let me fill the entire space. This one. This is, as you can see, uh, annular disk. Inner radius is R1 and outer radius is R2. And again, you must understand that I may not have to find out which coordinate. The X coordinate will be 0, yes or no? Because it is symmetrical. Do we understand this? Huh? Uh, we only have to find out the Y coordinate. The Y coordinate would be somewhere here. What is the Y coordinate? Again, if you understand things, you can get the answer. The Y coordinate of this gentleman, and I will write it here. The Y coordinate of this gentleman is 4 by 3 pi. 4 by 3 pi is already there. R2 cube minus R1 cube divided by R2 square minus R1 square. And you can see between this and this, you can see that there is a similarity just because there is a hole. Therefore, the answer has changed. Do we understand this, everyone? Now you'll have to remember all this. If you can remember all these, 99.9999% of questions are done in this particular topic. I'll give you time to note it down. You can note it down, all of these figures. And that would be uh, it for today's class. Let me know once you are done so that we can uh, wind up this class. Take care and uh, have a good day. Just note this down. I'll keep the screen sharing on. Take care. Bye-bye.